We are, of course, uh, beginning with our top story this hour. Rahul Gandhi is currently on a four-day visit to the United States of America, during which uh, he plans to interact with the members of the Indian diaspora and youth with stops in Dallas, Texas, as well as Washington, D.C., when in the USA, Rahul Gandhi plans to meet lawmakers and even senior officials of the USA government during his visit. During a recent address given by Rahul Gandhi, he has laid special focus on unemployment, education and technology. He has explained that while there are many countries that continue to struggle with unemployment, others like China and Vietnam are not, uh, and attributed this to a historical shift that has taken place in global production. During his address, Rahul Gandhi also said that uh, after the Lok Sabha results were announced earlier this year, Indians no longer fear the BJP or the PM. He also emphasized on the Congress Party's belief in India as a multiplicity of ideas, in contrast to the RSS's view of India as a single idea, and has also stressed upon the importance of the Constitution in safeguarding diversity. Joining us at this point live uh, is Dr. Pooja Tripathi, spokesperson of the Congress Party. Dr. Pooja Tripathi, uh, you know, just tell us about uh, what, you know, the main focus of Rahul Gandhi's was in this address, which of course he's made to the Indian diaspora abroad. He's on a visit to the United States of America. What, according to you, was the focus of his address? What was the thought process uh, behind raising the issues that he did? Hi, good evening, Udar, to everyone and the panel. As a leader of opposition, this is Rahul Gandhi's, Mr. Gandhi's first uh, visit to US and uh, definitely the whole electoral, the grueling electoral process and the way it was a watershed moment for the electoral politics, for the democracy that is India, definitely came up where he, you know, where he stressed upon the supremacy of constitution, the supremacy of, of people's will to fight against any attack on their, uh, you know, on their uh, democratic beliefs. And that's what uh, I think the whole crux of Mr. Gandhi's speech should be on how he emphasized the art of listening, how he emphasized the uh, power of listen, power of empathy, respect and love in Indian politics, which is definitely missing and definitely made an attack on the, um, you know, the RSS idea of uh, having a uh, brushing up India in one stroke. And that's that's very obvious when it comes to how RSS sees women, uh, women have uh, anti-women uh, statements that have come out from Chief Mohan Bhagwa statement or the Rashtriya Sevika Samitis or the whole the RSS history that has been embroiled in. He also, as he pointed out, he also, uh, you know, stressed upon the uh, role of China as in uh, as a production uh, economy and how there's a gap between the way we are imparting skills and the way people have inherent skills. By taking an example of the shoemaker from Sultanpur, whom he met last few uh, last few days back, and bringing in, asking the people of the Indian diaspora to coming up to the occasion and to uh, contribute to India's story, I think he, he created a he created a niche, he created a bridge between both the shoemaker from Sultanpur and the startup ecosystem that the uh, Texas holds. And I think it's, it's a it's a it's a beautiful speech. Everybody should listen to. And he contributed. Uh, I'll be very honest. What what strike me in that conversation? What strike me in that approach is that Congress is peripheral. Uh, the whole opposition is peripheral to the way people rose up to fight. The people rose up to fight on their space to dream, on their space in the India story, on their space in on their on their on their on any attack that uh, the uh, the Char Sopar slogan had for the constitution of India. And I think that that that's the uh, biggest crux that we can take away from his speech that he delivered at the the, the last. Yes. Uh, however, Puja, the the speech has been criticised uh, by yeah. opposition parties. Uh, the BJP has said he was trying to praise China and insult India. Oh, I don't think he was trying to praise China. And let me be very clear, RSS is not India and India is not RSS. It's the same RSS that, you know, that that uh, in its policy, RSS in its policy uh, opposed the anti wallet Act, opposed the Civil Disobedience Act, opposed the National Non-Cooperation Movement, opposed the Quit India Movement, opposed the Naval Mutiny of 1946. Is the same RSS that British government uh, brought out a paper in 1943 saying RSS is no menace to law and order. In fact, it does not actively participate in the dharnas and protests uh, demonstrations. The same RSS that uh, that uh, opposed the joining of the colonial uh, anti-colonial uh, uh, movement is the same RSS that uh, loyally consented to the British Civic Guard Authority. So when he says RSS is, is we are we are fighting for a country that is opposed to the idea of. Uh, RSS idea of India, and I think he was very correct. And when it comes to criticizing, let me be very clear, nowhere in his hour-long speech, nowhere he criticized the idea of India. 
he criticized the idea of someone rising up and saying i'm non biological and there is some divine power that has been vested in me to rule the country no the country outrightly rejected your non biological claim by puncturing the charts of our narrative i think that's where no where no where he took credit for uh, whatever performance congress has uh, come up to lok sabha elections he establish the supremacy of the country and no where we have to understand this was the same prime minister modi who in shanghai and in seoul went on to say that people were ashamed to be born in india before 2014 no he is a proud indian and every one of each one of us is a proud indian and that's what he established he established how people are the supreme power in this institution was established how everyone has a part in the india story how everyone is a protector of constitution and the looks of my elections have rightly pointed out the same result yes uh, uh, you know but dr puja tripathi again obviously uh, you know you do believe that issues of unemployment and uh, uh, issues of caste also the caste census are working with the people which is why of course uh, the leader of opposition is raising the issues that he is uh, we were speaking with uh, you know a senior leader of the bjp earlier in the day uh, and he said that the rahul gandhi is living in lala land these are not issues that are working with the people uh, the bjp also saying that uh, you know he is uh, trying to divide indians in fact pradeep bhandari of the bjp uh, on news x earlier in the day said uh, that uh, he is dividing hindus uh, and he is also dividing indians uh, and uh, he is insulting hinduism by his statements as well i think as i said again oh the rss is not him is he insulted rss and i stand by his statement this is the rss mohan bhagwat has said that you know mohan bhagwat in his uh, in his uh, uh, address to the uh, uh, the workshop of rashtriya sevika samiti ka uh, equated the women power as matra shakti and kutumb prabandhan we the doctors we the fighter pilots we the scientists who took india to the moon we don't want us to be you know labeled as matra shakti and kutumb prabandhan the rashtriya sevika samiti november 9 had a press conference where they claim that you know they oppose the idea of women participating in rss sakaka they oppose the ideas of daughters having a same paternal share they oppose the idea of marital rape and rape is something that happens in urban india this is rashtriya sevika samiti general secretary sita anandan statement anybody can google it so rss is not hinduism and nobody and when he talked about uh, abhay mudra when he talked about the policy of shiva you know when he talk about the uh, teachings of shiva i think uh, everybody each one i am a shiva bhakt that everyone is uh, follows one or the other uh, uh, deity and that's where he nobody is a lesser hindu and when he talks about the caste censors when he talk about the problem that's plaguing india he was talking to the indian diaspora just remember that is the same indian diaspora you approach to when you go into an election uh, ha, uh, asking for their support in election they should be known they should be Uh, you know very of they should be, be aware of and they should be part of the struggle that the country is facing because they will break the skills and uh, you know the technology whatever you say they will they are the part of the india studies you and me are so they should know about inflation they should know what congress stands where congress stands in caste ideology and no where no where uh, rahul gandhi uh, uh, denied you know uh, said any bad words about india and comparing to uh, shanghai and seoul speech of prime minister modi so i think bharatiya janata party is living in lala land and when he said nobody is fear of nobody is uh, uh, afraid of prime minister modi any further uh, revoking of lateral entry the revoking of broadcast bill the indexation benefit the unified pension scheme i think it's bharatiya janata party that is afraid of losing now and the idea that you know from municipal elections everything would be uh, run run in the name of modi ji vidhan sabha elections aap mat dekhiye modi ji ka aashirwad nahi milega karnataka this was said aap mat dekhiye himachal it was said ki aapke aage kaun sa pratyashi aap sochi aapka vote direct modi ji ko ja raha hai so the moment you are restricted to 240 remember that your direct road modi ji ko gaya hai and nobody is fearful of the idea that only you know the modi ji is uh, want to lead the people have given your verdict that constitution is supreme and people uh, are at the center stage of politics and it should always be like that it should never be arya bahadur janata party or congress it should be people that sh uh, should uh, take a call it's so people that's power should be supreme and that's what the elections and that's why i said this election have been watershed and when bharatiya janata party says it being lala land i think they are in the lala land and uh, the coming uh, state elections would show them who's in the lala land interestingly uh, you know the indians no longer fear the bjp or the pm that's also an interesting statement that rahul has made that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying when you run do you, do you believe no but then do you believe then that there was a fear 
of Prime Minister and BJP earlier before 24? So I am saying everything was centered around Prime Minister. Remember, it was Modi Sarkar one, Modi Sarkar two, and it, it on the day of uh, evening of fourth June, it came into NDA Sarkar. This is the fear. This is yes. what we are talking about, and that's what we are talking about. When you restrict the why was four hundred par needed? Why was oh. Bharti Janata Party's official? Yeah, I'm sorry, okay. but my, my my final question, uh, uh, my final question to you, uh, Pooja Tripathi, before we also get in uh, some other guests also who are joining us live, uh, is uh, on the statement again uh, to highlight the success of China and Vietnam. Was that needed? Uh, fair enough, you can make a point of unemployment according to what you feel, but to highlight success of China and Vietnam, is that needed at this juncture? You Pooja. have to understand that Rahul Gandhi Buddha was making a broader point of unless and until, unless and until we stress on the manufacturing center, uh, manufacturing sector, unless and until we stress on the production, unless and until we stress on the uh, bridging the skill gap, we can't generate employment for the country because not everyone can have the government employment unless and until and that's where the whole point of China and Vietnam came because China is definitely uh, 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 is being the production boss of the world and that's where it, uh, he emphasized the China and nowhere, nowhere he said that anybody is ashamed to be born in India before 2014 yes. or 1947, okay. nowhere. He okay. was making a point on employment. All right. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. Pooja Tripathi of the Congress Party, thank you very much for joining us on NewsX with your perspective on this big story. Let's also bring in another guest. I believe uh, uh, Dharinder Tayal is joining us live. Dr. Dharinder Tayal is spokesperson of the BJP. Dr. Tayal, welcome to NewsX. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, the, the Congress party believed that Rahul Gandhi was making a broader point. They are saying that Indians are no longer fearful of Prime Minister Modi and the BJP after 24. Uh, Rahul Gandhi also raising several issues in the United States of America. How do you view his address and how do you respond to it? Oh, thank you, Uday. In fact, if one was to listen to Rahul Gandhi and also to Dr. Pooja Tripathi, one would get a feeling that uh, maybe it is Congress which has got charts of power this time. I mean, they don't realize somewhere that for the last three elections put together, they have they are not even equal to what BJP has got. But somewhere the gentleman and the lady are in La La Land. We are, he actually called it a victory in his statement. He's called it a victory of the Congress. At 97, you haven't even touched 100. And when you talk about that the people are no longer afraid, you know, the people were so scared that they voted the BJP back to power the third time. Come on, wake up! We see the facts. Third time in a row you've been routed. Just because you've got a few more seats this time, so Mama said, no, no, all is well with you. That is what Congress is about. Number one. Number two, a critical difference. Now, they have raised the issue of what is RSS about, and I will tell you what RSS and BJP what is it about and what is Bharatiyata about and what is Bharatiya Sanskar about? Vajpayee ji as an opposition leader was sent to the UN and when there he was asked, but you are from the opposition. He says, no, today I'm standing here for my country. When I go back, I will take on the, uh, my role of the opposition. And here is a leader of the opposition who at every conceivable opportunity whenever he goes abroad, has nothing but bad words for the India and good words for his first love, China. Because she's been talking so much about China, let's talk about China. What is that MOU, secret MOU, that has been signed by the Congress Party to save its government at that time when the Communist parties were withdrawing their uh, support from the UPA? Why is that document not in public domain? What is secret about that document? Why did Rahul Gandhi deny going to the Chinese embassy when Oklam was on? Why did he deny meeting the Chinese when he went to Mansarovar? All of which came out. What was going on and what is going on with China? Take another instance. And every Indian should be concerned about this. When the conflict with China was on, at that time, Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary said, the Indian forces have the guts and the courage and the valor that they can defang the Chinese dragon. He was made to delete that tweet. What was wrong with this tweet? 
because the Chinese bosses said, what are you doing? You can't criticize us. He was made to delete that tweet. It is there in public domain. It can be checked up. The other thing, which is very critical here, is when he says the idea of India. Yes. What is the, he's talked about the 100 years of uh, RSS. I'm going to talk about the 100 years of uh, or more of the Grand Old Party. What is their DNA? This is A.O. Hume's party. This is the British bread party. That DNA is divide and rule. As far as Rahul Gandhi is concerned, we are diverse people, different people who've come together to form one nation. No, we're not. We are one people who have their individual differences, just like the siblings or siblings or kids of the same parents. Yes. Of this, the proof of this lies in the statement of the gentleman who has been reinstated and who welcomed him in Texas, Mr. Sam Petroda, who said the North Indians are like whites, the South Indians are like Africans, the East Indians are like Chinese, the yes. West Indians are like Arabs. And they have reinstated him by reinstating him immediately after the elections. Congress has clearly demonstrated they stand by his statement. And that is the idea. He speaks Amrit Paul's language. He does not speak the language of B.R. Ambedkar. Okay. B.R. Ambedkar has say, had said that India is an indestructible union of destructible states. Right. So but the Congress the party system. believes, obviously, and the opposition parties believe, Narendra Tayal, that, uh, you know, that their, their pitch of... Uh, you know, the caste census and, of course, uh, uh, on the caste breakup of, of the country and equal representation for different castes is working uh, based on the previous results. They also feel that the issue of unemployment is working, which is why this pitch is repeatedly made uh, by Mr. Gandhi and by other opposition leaders. So, clearly you are saying that it is a political pitch from them. It is a sign of desperation because they are likely to be wiped out. The private limited company is losing its shares and where is the money going to come from? So, somehow anything, I mean, look at the statement. I mean, if you said, no, on her land, a wonderful statement, khata, khat, khata, khat, a lakh of rupees per family per year. 32 crore households in India. So, 32 lakh crores to be given out. 32 lakh crores is the annual revenue of India. So what are we talking about? Everything is going to be given away? No, they knew well enough. How do we make a car? So since we are not going to bond the government, let's say whatever. So a crazy scheme is given to the people. Anything to just get back into that power. Nothing is above power. For the RSS, for the BJP, the country is first. And to say somebody is afraid of the Prime Minister, there's only one person and one party that is afraid of the Prime Minister. That is Rahul Gandhi and Congress. Okay, how do you also view what he said about the fact that, you know, India and the US is struggling with unemployment, but China and Vietnam aren't? No, China, he has praised all along. Let me take you back. When he went to UK last time, go through his PPT. In his PPT, and I'll, I'll just read it for you. It is, it is so hilarious. It is so hilarious what he said there. Uh, he says, individual liberty is not central to the Chinese idea. So you can't have a patent, you can't have a copyright, nothing belongs to you. So individual liberty is not central to the Chinese idea. They have had too many revolutions. Society needs to be in harmony. So Tiananmen Square, as per him, is justified. So he even justifies everything China does. If there is no liberty in China, he justifies that also. Today, when the country is leading in production, you have the best GDP in the world. Okay. You are leading on all counts. Your fiscal deficit is okay. down. I mean, I just one point I want to make. If your GDP is going up by 8%, then who is doing that additional protection or that additional production? All right. Dr. Dhanindu Tayal of the BJP, I appreciate you joining us with your, big, uh, with your perspective on this big story. Uh, I believe we also have Professor Madhav Nalapath, editorial director of the Sunday Guardian, live with us. Professor Nalapath, I would like to rope you in here now uh, on to Rahul Gandhi's uh, big address. What did you make of it? What did you make of the uh, uh, pointers of his speech and uh, the stress points of him uh, while uh, addressing uh, the audience in the United States of America? And I think you also had an intervention to make to what a Congress leader said earlier on our show. Look, uh, I, you know, we have all been tracking Mr. Gandhi on his visits to the United States. And uh, he has said multiple times in multiple fora that there is no democracy in India. The whole thing is controlled by the government. What he's basically saying 
is that the Congress doubled its tally so that we can become leader of the opposition because Prime Minister Modi wanted the Congress to double its tally. Prime Minister Modi wanted the BJP to cut down its tally to below the majority mark. Prime Minister, otherwise, because after all, Prime Minister Modi controls everything. Everybody is scared of him. All institutions obey him. They don't listen to anybody else. So obviously, Prime Minister Modi ensured that Rahul Gandhi is the leader of the opposition. And Prime Minister Modi ensured the BJP tally will be cut. That's the first point. I mean, I'm, I am amazed. I had no idea it was Prime Minister Modi who was responsible for the election results. I thought it was a free and fair election. And the free and fair election, frankly, the BJP lost seats and the Congress party gained seats. I have never thought elections in India anything other than free and fair. Second point is, uh, would they, I don't know who's briefing Mr. Rahul Gandhi, but please allow me to point out, unemployment among the youth is rampant in China. It's high in India, but it's much higher than in China. Any, I mean, frankly, uh, any, uh, if, I mean, uh, if you come to our geopolitics uh, 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 students in Manipal, you will see that they will tell you, or, or students uh, of, uh, of economics and co uh, anywhere, the unemployment rate in China is exceptionally high among youth. There's significant rise in that. So I don't understand on what basis he's making these statements. He's making a statement that he came as LOP because of Prime Minister Modi, based on his, or his record that India is not a democracy, it's a dictatorship. Every institution is controlled by the government. The government is controlled by Prime Minister Modi. So this is, I mean, I can't see the logic in this. Quite frankly, and most important of all, most disappointing of all, if you ask me, Uday, this is the son of Rajiv Gandhi. Rajiv Gandhi tried to get a revolution in telecom in India. Sam, in his earlier days, was not a politician. He is one now. But he was a very good telecom expert. And he did a lot of work on CDAC and CDOT. The only problem was it was not privatized. So that uh, was a problem. It should have been privatized more extensively during that time. But he did an ex exceptionally good job. And Rajiv Gandhi did that. Indira Gandhi fought with Pranam Mukherjee, a finance minister, who did not want color television to India for the Asiad Games. He said, no, 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 no. India make, uh, why do you have color television in India? She fought with him. To that, no, this, I want the most modern technology in India during Asia. And this is the grandson of Indira Gandhi and the son of, Rah of Rajiv Gandhi saying that AI, implying that AI is bad. AI is a very useful instrument. And believe me, like... Do you believe, do you believe then that the leader like, of opposition should make a, a more responsible statements when he is representing India abroad? Look, the leader of the opposition is free in a democracy to make whatever statements he or she wants. Rahul Gandhi is free to make whatever statements he or she wants. And every statement of his is on public record. And it will be checked as to the basis of facts or not. I am only saying the grandson of Indira Gandhi and the son of Rajiv Gandhi, uh, I mean, you know, uh, especially Rajiv Gandhi is someone I liked, I, I liked a lot and admired a lot. I mean, he was always for technology. Always. Indira Gandhi wanted the best technology for India. I mean, she went around the, the Sarkari route. That's her mistake. But she wanted the best technology for India. And here is a, the, the grandson and the son saying that AI, implying that AI should not be you know, commonplace in India. What you're doing is crippling Indian industry, crippling the future of young Indians, crippling the future of India. It's like saying you shouldn't have computers. I remember you know, arguments in the 1980s. Hey, computer, no, no. 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 And we are all using computers now. You know, we'll all be using AI three years from now. Forget five years, three years. So they, I can only tell you my personal feeling as someone who's a well-wisher of both sides of the family. I'm a well-wisher of, uh, of uh, Rahul and Priyanka. I'm a well-wisher of Varun. Uh, very much so. I'm a well-wisher of both sides of the Nehru family. I am deeply disappointed that Rahul Gandhi should have this approach on democracy in India after his election victory, after he is now LOP, and doubly disappointed that the son of Rajiv Gandhi should oppose technology. 
That's all I'm saying. Also, do you believe the, the comparison to China was uh, unnecessary at this point, given our relations? No, the comparison to China, he's free to do whatever he wants. But it is, un, it is not correct. It is incorrect. And it will be known on the internet immediately within milliseconds that this man is saying something which is not true. I wish, you know, Rahul had checked his facts. I would like to see this, I mean, he, you know, uh, uh, be sure of his facts before speaking out. He's now no longer just a member of parliament. He's a leader of the opposition. He has a highly responsible position, okay. a high constitutional position. Okay. He should check and double check his facts before going on public record. And that's all I have to say as right. a well-wisher of his family and as a well-wisher of Rahul Gandhi. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.